Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. The Inky List is a brand I've been talking about on and off for a while now. I got sent a load of their products last year, like maybe October I think it was, and since then I've purchased so many of my own because like the ordinary, there's either products that I absolutely love or really don't like for some reason. There seems to be only a couple in between and that's as far as like the ordinary comparisons really go. I feel like a lot of people are lumping the Ink List and the Ordinary as very similar brands. But when you really look at the ingredients and formulations of some of these products, they're, they're nothing alike. Like I feel like you're getting a lot more for your money with the Ink List products. Whereas The Ordinary is literally just what it says on the tin. It's very, very basic in most cases. But today I wanna to share some of the best products, the products I absolutely love from the Inky List. Some kind of in between, some that like are okay. And then some of the products I like the least out of the Inky List. There are a lot more products that I love than dislike. However, I'm gonna to stick to three products for each category. And if you wanna see more, I, I, can, I can do more. As always, this is my consumer level skincare enthusiast review. Just because I dislike something, it doesn't mean it's bad. It might be one of your favorites. And these are all based on my personal opinions and experience. So if I do dislike something that you love, leave that down below. And if I love something that you really didn't like, let me know as well. I'm gonna start off with the best. I'm gonna go to like the, the fines and then we're gonna finish with the worst. So the best, I'm going to start off with one I've talked about non-stop recently. And that's the tranexamic acid overnight treatment. So I'll keep it brief, but I'm very prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and I need a product that's gonna help with that. I've tried various serums. I've tried other serums with tranexamic acid in. One was really, really good. The others were a little bit like, Ugh. And a lot of products that claim to get rid of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentations just contain like glycolic acid, for example. But I feel like tranexamic acid is the next big acid. It's so, so good at getting rid of dark spots. It's known to help reduce redness and inflammation as well. In some cases, it's been known to help with the appearance of rosacea as well. But most importantly, it's favored for its ability to reduce the appearance of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Dark spots, those little things left over from spots. The general idea of how this works is it's somehow blocks the passing of melanin to the keratinocytes, in turn stopping dark spots hyperpigmentation showing up on your skin. Or something like that, don't quote me. I've actually seen a lot of improvement in the redness on my skin. Dark spots are slowly fading, but I do use an AHA alongside this. The real test is gonna be a dark spot I have on the end of my nose. So I'm documenting that. So hopefully um, in a couple months, I'll be able to bring you some kind of difference, some kind of before and after. It's gonna take a while. Dark spots take a while to fade. What I love is if you go on their website, their website is full of information, by the way, how and when to use each product. With this product, they have an interview where a lady was using this product for 60 days. And she says that even though hyperpigmentation has massively improved, you're not gonna see much of a difference within 60 days. And I like that. The Inculists are being realistic. You don't see much of an improvement within 60 days. But that kind of shows me that they have a lot of faith in their own product and I'm really enjoying it so far. And it's something I'm gonna to continue to use. One thing I must say is that they actually say to use this as a final step in place of moisturizer. It's no way moisturizer enough. I could not use this in the evening as my final step and then go to bed and wake up with nice skin the next day. I did try it. I was very, very dry. So I have been using this as a thicker serum. So after all my serums, before my moisturizer, it works absolutely fine. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works in the long run with dark spots. The next product, in no particular order by the way, is the 15% Vitamin C Serum and EGF. This has to be one of the nicest vitamin C serums I've ever used. My struggles with vitamin C serums, as I always say, they can be very oily, very like metallic-y smelling. Some, the higher percentages, can be very, very gritty. It's so light on the skin and it's very, very easy to incorporate into my routine and plays so, so well with other serums. It has 15% ascorbyl glucoside. That is a derivative of L-ascorbic acid. Once ascorbyl glucoside is absorbed into the skin, it actually does turn into L ascorbic acid. This means that you get a gentler version of vitamin C. It does however mean that it's probably not as potent as 15% vitamin C serum, but it's good to use if you're trying to like work your way up to the higher percentages. I've gone from 5% to 15% here, maybe a little bit less, and I'm now going up to 22%. 
a, a bit a bit of a jump there, but I feel like my skin's ready for it. It is this thicker serum consistency. It's like a gel, like a, a creamy gel <laughs> consistency that I use in the morning. It gives your skin this instant glowy look. And as I said, works great with other serums. It sits so well under sunscreen and moisturizer. It doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't look like anything other than healthy glow on the skin. I really, really like this. So this also contains EGF as the name suggests, which stands for Epidermal Growth Factor. This generally just looks after your skin. It helps with elasticity, collagen production, the general health of your skin as well. It's known to be quite repairing. My skin tone is generally brighter. I've just got brighter skin. I feel like in the mornings, like because I'm not doing all my evening routine and all my evening product, uh, all my evening products, my morning, my skin in the morning can just get a little bit like flat, if that makes sense. So adding a vitamin C over the last couple of months does give my skin a little bit more of a radiance to it. As I mentioned, I'm now working my way up. I'm on 22% vitamin C. I'm not using this currently, but I would recommend it if you are trying to work your way up to the higher percentages. The final in my products I love from the Inky list is the Ceramide Night Treatment. Last year was a struggle for my skin. I've said this so many times, but looking back at my videos, there's one video where I'm in the bathroom and my skin just looks like it's in so much pain. I put it through a lot. So I was looking for a product to really, really help just with my skin barrier, help it repair itself, restore my skin back to its natural, normal condition. The Inculus sent me this product last year and it's one of the first products I used because it sounded like something I needed right at that moment in time. So this is an overnight mask that you use meant to be in your final stage. It helps to rebuild the structure of your skin using three different ceramides. We always describe ceramides as like the glue that kind of like holds our skin together. It helps lock in that hydration and that moisture, like fills in the holes, you know? as well as squalane, sodium hyaluronate, and jojoba seed oil. So this night treatment also really helps with irritated skin, dehydrated skin, all those things that often come along with a damaged skin barrier. You also have amino acids in there. And this this all sounds really good, but it does sound like it's gonna be like a sticky, heavy, um, really thick moisturizer, which is what I thought before I pumped it out. But it's not, it's somewhere in between like a lightweight gel moisturizer and a slightly thicker moisturizer. Again, the ink is say to use this instead of a moisturizer, but it's just not thick enough. It's not occlusive enough to use in the evening. It's you, I woke up with dry skin and I'm oily. So like, again, this is something I'd use in between the serum and moisturizer stage. But yes, this has helped my skin so, so much. It's something I'm gonna continue to use a couple times a week, especially as I'm always trying out new products. This has just really, really helped look after my skin more than I am. Let's talk about the products that are like fine. They're fine. They're not like, they're not bad, they're fine. Oat Cleansing Balm, I've talked about this once, maybe twice before. This is a very good cleanser. And it's and it's gained a ton of popularity here on YouTube and just in social media in general. I'm seeing it pop up everywhere. It is one of the inky list, in my opinion, better products. I think it's one of their more, more um, successful, well, I can't, I don't know their figures, but it seems to be one of their more popular products. But amongst all brands and amongst all cleansers available, this is okay. It's fine. It's nothing groundbreakingly amazing, but it is good. You have colonial oatmeal in there, which we all know is super Soothing. It's amazing for irritated skin. You have oat kernel oil and sweet almond oil. Again, very, very soothing. Very good for dry, damaged skin. All making this a really nice, gentle, non-irritating cleanser. A first and second cleanse for even the most damaged, irritated and sensitive of skin types. It's great for all skin types. You also have ceterol alcohol in here, again, helping with dry skin. You have sunflower seed oil, um, which can help with um, acne and irritated skin, redness inflammation. It's just like a nice cleanser and you can, you can feel all that goodness in it when you put it on your skin. As I mentioned before, you get a two in one with this. So it's, how much is it? It's 9.99 for a huge 150 milliliter tube, which in my opinion is such a good deal. You've got a first cleanse in here. You could use it as like a cleansing balm, emulsify it, rinse it away, then use it as a normal cleanser. So $9.99 for two cleansers, I think is really, really good. It rubs over the skin perfectly. It rinses away perfectly as well. So whilst this isn't my favorite cleanser of all time, I do prefer still having a separate cleansing balm or cleansing oil and a separate water cleanse. If someone was to, if I ran out of all my cleansers and all I had was this Inculus product for the next month, 
I'd be absolutely fine with it. Like it does a good job, I'll be fine with it. I might miss some of my other cleansers, but it does a great job. Let's talk about their niacinamide. Now, a lot of people have asked me to compare this to the Ordinary's niacinamide because of the simplicity of the product. However, when you do look at the, uh, the ingredients, the Anculus niacinamide is more of a well-rounded formulated product, whereas the Ordinary's niacinamide is niacinamide and zinc. It's very, very basic compared to the Inculus. So yeah, I do feel like they're completely different. The Inculus niacinamide to me feels more like a um, niacinamide serum. Do you know what I mean? They, they could, they just, they've just called it niacinamide, but it feels like so much more than that. This contains hyaluronic acid and glycerin, so it's hydrating on the skin. A lot of people complain that with the niacinamide, um, the Ordinary's niacinamide, they were left with kind of dry skin. You're not gonna get that with some of the ingredients in the Inculus niacinamide. The Inculus niacinamide sits very, very well and plays very, very well with other products. A lot of people complain that the Ordinary's niacinamide peels on the skin, but it shouldn't really, really be a problem if you don't wear makeup. The Inculus niacinamide it's two pounds more, but you're getting more. It's not, it's not really a big, you know, it's not like you can pretty much use one or the other. <laughs> I would recommend that they're inculus if you're drier, if you do find niacinamide dries you out. The ordinary is if you're oily or um, spotty and you're kind of wanting to balance it out a little bit more, the, the ordinary is the one for you. However, I would say if you've already got a niacinamide serum that works for you, you're not missing out on anything by not using the inculus niacinamide. And that's kind of all I have to say about it. It's a good niacinamide serum. And that's about it. If you don't have one, go ahead and buy this one. One, but if you already got one and you like it, then again, you're not missing out. Another one that is just fine is the C50 Blemish Treatment. This is a UK exclusive only. I didn't realize uh, until I went on the website. This is an overnight treatment that targets blemishes, um, breakouts and potential breakouts as well. This contains 5% Stay C, and that's copyrighted. No idea what that is. They don't even explain what that is. This is to prevent and reduce blemishes um, and breakouts. We have 2% salicylic acid in there as well. Um, it's great for people with oily skin. It helps decongest as well. Then you have 0.2% metacastasize to deal with the redness. And you know what, it, it does it does help, it helps very well. Um, for example, if I know I'm like trialing a new product that helps um, cell turnover, any exfoliators I have, I know it will 100% break me out and that's fine, you go through a purging stage. So I picked up the C50 treatment and um, used it the second day after I broke out, after I started using new product and the amount of time that those spots stayed on my skin was significantly less. As far as how red they were, how aggressive they were, how bumpy they were and how long they stayed on my skin. I can't, I can't for the life of me tell you what that 5% stay C is. I don't like it when brands do that. Like they make up like these miracle ingredients and these like science-y kind of things. Again, whilst this does have a thicker, nicer consistency, they do recommend again using this in place of your moisturizer overnight. And again, it's no way near thick enough. It hasn't got that kind of occlusivity to it where you want to leave it on your skin and nothing else. And you're gonna wake up with dry skin. I like to have that feeling of locked in hydration and moisture. And none of these overnight treatments do that. But then I don't, that doesn't bother me because I just see them as more of a um, after serum stage pre-moisturizer stage. When this runs out, I won't be repurchasing it. It's good and I would recommend it if you break out a lot. I got this for $12.99 and whilst it's good, I actually have my pores choice as lake like acid, which is something I use for when I break out, either spread over my skin or as a direct spot treatment. And I find that works perfectly fine and I'm quite a religious user of that. However, that is around 30 to 40 pounds, depending on if they have a sale or not. Um, and the Inculus one is obviously a fair bit cheaper. So I would actually recommend this to anyone who breaks out regularly or has a bit of trouble battling with breakouts. If you're on a budget, it's very, very good. But this is also, I feel like, a much better alternative to those over drying spot treatments that I didn't think still existed to this day. But this is a much nicer, not drying, not as harsh alternative to those direct spot treatments. Let's talk about the worst, and I know a few of these I've already featured, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the apple cider vinegar acid peel. I mentioned this before, but I, I shouldn't have used this. This was kind of my fault. Apple cider vinegar doesn't work for my skin. My skin doesn't enjoy apple cider vinegar, but I do also feel like this is kind of a product that's a bit like, 
no one really needs this. It's a bit of like a gimmicky kind of thing, I feel. J jumping on a trend that is apple cider vinegar, which I never hear the end of, oh my God. Of course it's apple cider vinegar, so it's smelt a little bit. So this product is a 10 minute leave on treatment that's they describe as like a 10 minute glow. So you're meant to glow after. That's because it's a pill, it's an acid pill basically. I'm not a fan of apple cider vinegar, and whilst it's not gonna kill you, it can be very, very irritating for your skin. Dermatologists don't often recommend you use as apple cider vinegar on your skin when you can just use an AHA. It's probably absolutely fine when it's well formulated into a product, however. And that's what kind of tempted me to try this. So this is 10% glycolic acid, 5% multi-fruit acid blends, which looking at the ingredients, it looks like you've got like orange and lemon extract in there and a few other things. You've got 2% apple cider vinegar, um, of course, which is an AHA here. And for my skin, this was all a bit too much, but going into it, I knew I shouldn't have used this. I'm not at this stage of exfoliation. Um, I don't get along with the ordinaries. Um, AHA, 30%, whatever, I use very, very rarely, and I often just use it on very dark, stubborn spots. It was just too much. There's also willow bark extract in here, which is anti-inflammatory, but has also been referred to as kind of like a more natural BHA. Whether that's exactly how it works on the skin, I don't think there's that the studies behind that, but potentially you got a BHA in there as well. Um, a lot of people have asked me to compare the Ordinary's AHA, BHA pill thing to this, and it, it doesn't compare, it's nowhere near intense. So I would say if you do want to try a stronger pill, the apple cider vinegar one product is something I prefer people to use over the Ordinary's. It's the idea of like instant fix, 10, 10 minute glow. That is something I really dislike in skincare. I mean, and it didn't, it didn't make my skin glow in 10 minutes to be honest with you. It just smelled a little bit and no. The next product is the vitamin C. This is a 30% vitamin C with um, L ascorbic acid. And I feel like that's all I need to say. I mean, Jesus Christ, that was, Honestly, one of the most painful things I've ever put on my skin. This is not for those people who are new to vitamin C, have sensitive skin. I didn't think my skin was that sensitive, but holy fuck, this stung to the point where I had to like put my hands on my face and like try not to scream. It stung so bad. And in areas where I know my skin isn't easily irritated, I've comfortably used 22% vitamin C serums more recently. And it wasn't so long ago that I used this 30% vitamin C. So I know there is a bit of a jump there, but I did go from 5% to 15 to 22. I just didn't think it would sting and hurt so much. This wouldn't usually bother me, but I did try buffering it as well, as they suggest, with hyaluronic acid and also a moisturizer when I was still using hyaluronic acid, and it didn't help whatsoever. It really didn't help, which makes sense. It's 30% it's strong, but what gets me is on their website, they describe it as a low irritation product. I don't know how many people tried this or how many people they tested it on or used it before they wrote this, but it is not low irritation. That's a lie to me. Um, this also does contain dimethicone and uh, PEG-10 dimethicone, both silicones which are fine, but I just don't like the feel of them on my skin. I don't like that kind of like silky matte look and feel that they give your skin. I like a glow, um, I like to look dewy, not oily, but dewy, there's a very fine line. I don't like to look matte. Uh, unfortunately for me and my skin and using with my other products, this means that other products don't play well with this vitamin C. They peel off the skin and it was at the point where I could actually like physically peel away, like I could just roll the products away. Again, I'm looking at the website, they describe the product as rich and creamy in texture and I really wouldn't describe it as rich and creamy at all, it's really not. It just feels like an old fashioned makeup primer, but they do make that amazing alternative, the 15%, obviously not as strong. Maybe if you are at that level, you enjoy this, but for me, for me, this would be a vitamin C serum that I would want to work up to, 30%, right? I'm on 22% now, I'm loving it, not from the Inklist, from another brand. My next goal would be 30%, but also because of the way this feels on my skin and it doesn't play nice with other products, it's not a product that I'm, I'm looking to use in the future. Okay, let's talk about their Brighten Eye Eye Cream. This, it, it's, it's just an eye cream, isn't it? Like, eye creams are eye creams. And they're throwing in some fancy secret blend ingredient names. So in this case, on their website, we have Brightenil. <laughs> if that's trademarked. And Blurring Technology. I have to be, I've come across Blurring Technology in some um, products, uh, like Nano Blur and some makeup products as well. It's just light reflecting particles usually. 
Um, and I have to be honest, this kind of, this is the kind of stuff I hate that brands do. This kind of like false science technology in your skincare, like, and they take like a, um, a mixture of like different um, extracts and then they name it something special, like fucking KFC secret special herbs or whatever it is, seasoning. Honestly, looking at the ingredients, it just looks like a nice eye cream, a decent eye cream. It would even make a nice moisturizer. They throw some mica in there to give it that shimmer effect on the skin, which is so, so minuscule in that product that I don't think it's worth even having that 1% mica in there. They have hydroxyacetate. To phone. <laughs> That's basically a synthetic antioxidant. They have some fatty alcohol, some plant extracts, some humectants. Again, a, it looks like a nice hydrating moisturizer, like, and it does feel nice under the eyes. And it gives like any moisturizer, when you put it on your skin, it gives you that little bit of a moisturized glow. But this whole bright eye, bright to nil blurring technology, if you're gonna hype up your eye cream, make it good, make it special. It has to deliver, and this was extremely average it was an eye cream this would belong in my um uh it's all right category if they didn't hype up it so so much i mentioned at the beginning that on their website their website is amazing it's got like a wealth of information on there and um real kind of customer testimonials like user testimonials on their website they do have a video showing um two subjects who use the eye cream for 60 days and they kind of have like this before and after picture and Bearing in mind, but by education, I'm a photographer. Um, in one picture of the before and after, it looks like they've just moisturized under the eye, like they've just used the eye cream and the light's bouncing off that. And it does make the under eye look a lot lighter because there's light on the under eye. And in the other picture, the subject's just tilting her head up a bit, obviously catching light a bit. Look, you can do it now. You can see all that darkness under there. If I tilt up, most of the darkness has gone and that's all they're doing. So again, it's kind of a bit like a, like, oh, that's disappointing. Also, mica is interesting. It doesn't say it's synthetic mica. It's hard to trust and know exactly how um, this type of ingredient is being sourced. I, tr I try to find, I couldn't find information on how the inky list are um, sourcing their mica, but I do think they would do it um, well, I do think they source it sensibly, but if you know for sure, please leave a comment. I don't understand why a brand like, like this couldn't use synthetic mica anyway, to be honest. And even if they're not, I, I just don't, I think it's a waste of an ingredient putting mica in there. I just don't think it does a lot. So they are some of my, the best, the worst, and they're kind of like, they're fine products from the Inky list. I'm sorry this has taken a long time. You've probably heard of a few of these already. Let me know if you want me to try a few of the others. I, the Inky list is actually a brand I'm excited about. I want to try so many of their products. I love so many of their products. It's just a few little products that I'm like, oh, you didn't really need to do that. But as always, this is just my opinion. So let me know if you absolutely love any of these. Let me know if you hate any of these and let me know if you're fine with some of these. Leave those in the comments down below. But that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.